being the Arlington Redevelopment Board. Uh, fairly short agenda this evening. First up is the discussion of the leases at the Central School. Okay. Um, I wanted to try to see if we could wrap up at least two of the three leases. We have, we discussed the Mr. Food Watch Association who wants a shorter lease term than what was in the model lease. And I sent out with the email last week the terms, the, the term that they'd like to, uh, the board to consider. And they don't mind the fact that, they said if the board can live with it, they can live with the fact that they would only have a few months of experience, well, more than a few months um, of experience, I think it's like nine months of experience with the lease before they would need to um, consider with you extending the lease. If that's okay with you, they said that's okay with them. So, thanks on the board. Bruce? So how does this work logistically? So the, the tenant sends us a notice saying they'd like to stay on past the original two years, and then we have the option to extend it? Right. Exactly. Or we could just present them with the offer to extend it, right? Right. The highlighted language that is on this handout, it doesn't indicate whether the tenant is obligated to uh, take the extension if we, if we offer it to them. I think that's intentional. I think the way this is written, they're not obligated. If They, they want to be able to get out of it if they feel that it's more of a financial burden than their organization okay. can bear. They don't think that that's likely, but they also want to try to be responsible and since this is the first time though. Okay, so and I guess in the language that's highlighted in section 4B says that it requires the landlord and tenant to agree to extend, otherwise the lease terminates. Okay. I guess my question is more for, uh, from the perspective of staff, I mean, going through a procurement is an effort and everything else. I mean, to some extent, are, are you okay with the shorter term and the fact that, you know, in a, in a year's time, you could well be out there doing this all over again yeah. for such a small space. I mean, it seems a little... I guess, I guess my whole point when I, I think I was one of the first to bring it up is, you know, it just seems kind of very short from, a, from, from your perspective as well for having to go back out to procurement. It is very short. And the principle behind the tenancy in that building was to try to get organizations that are service organizations mm -hmm. that help out the town or, or provide some type of service. We would try to do that, but I would like to, if we have to go back out for, to procurement, I would like not to be too limited by that. On the other hand, if we were to go to um, try to get a commercial tenant, maybe a, a small business um, that just needs a short period of time, they're, they're looking for the same type of yeah. flexibility that Mr. Griffin Watershed Association is looking for. Right. Maybe even more flexibility, which would not be in our interest, but it would be something I think we should consider in that event. Okay, but, but you're okay, presumably, it's, it is what it is. I fact of life okay. with these buildings, you know? Okay, all right. That's all I have on that. So. I think it seems fine. I think it's fine. I think it's fine. We understand that they don't think it will necessarily break them. I think it's fair to give them a safeguard considering that they're in this position that they've never been in before. So the rest of the board can live with it. I think that's fine. Okay. Um, if that's the case, then I'll prepare copies for signature if the board wants to act. Sure. So should we be giving the chair the authority to I sign the leases? Should, yes, that's what we've done in the past. Okay. I'll, I'll move to, um, <coughs> to uh, uh, approve the chairman um, signing the leases for 
um, Mystic River Watershed, and is it 23 Maple that's the other ones? Yeah, 23 Maple, the terms are a little different because they're proposing some, ch um, there's some differences between, so no, short answer is, I think you want to keep the motion just to just in the, just Mystic to River Watershed with, Association. Okay, Mystic River. Or, I should have said that your option would be since the Seniors Association yeah, isn't proposing any changes to the Oh, policies. okay, so it's both of those. Then. You could do both of them in the okay. Central School. Okay, so both of the space in the Central School Mystic River Watershed and the Senior uh, Center Association uh, leases um, with any conforming changes that the Chair may deem appropriate at the time. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. And now, if I may, I want to inform you of a few of the um, differences in the 23 Maple Street lease. I think we can work them out, but I just want to, um, you to be aware of them and maybe, if necessary, see if there's a member who of the board who wants to work on this um, offline until we get this <coughs> in a place where it makes sense. Um, and they're, it's kind of just housekeeping stuff. Like the um, old lease said the town will remove ordinary household waste provided is left at the curb and will remove snow from parking spaces. What, what really happens is today, I think, and there is an expectation that the tenant will remove snow from their walkways mm -hmm. and so on. And they have been putting the waste in the dumpster but we don't charge them for that. We could just continue to allow them to put it in the dumpster. It's been working. It's, it's not what was in the old lease, that the expired lease, uh, but that would, they would like to continue to put it in the dumpster. So we'd have to adjust the lease for that. The, yeah, the model lease has a similar but smaller section called removal of ordinary waste that says the landlord shall cause ordinary waste to be removed from the demised premises. So that is essentially what's happening right now with the dumpster. Um, so another section, the expired lease allows termination by the tenant with four months notice if the tenant loses funding. The model lease, of course, doesn't have anything like that. The old expired lease had that because this is an organization, this tenant depends on grant funding to do its job. They don't foresee anything like that, but they ask if they could have something like that in the lease or if it would be possible to have a clause that allowed them to sublet so that until the uh, lease came to term, so that they could be relieved of, if they get into a situation where they just don't have their grant funding, mm -hmm. would they be able to have someone else come in and sublet it to the term of the lease? I can run through all of these, or you can discuss them as we come up. Well, just on that last point, I think that, you know, as long as um, the town it, it's still subject to the landlord's consent, um, and I would say which can be granted or withheld at the discretion of the of the landlord. Um, because I think that we have an obligation to make sure that we're selecting a, a a tenant that sort of meets the profile of what we're typically looking for for that property. Um, so I, I, wanted to, I, I understand the concern that the tenant has, though. I mean, if they run out of funding, you know, they're not going to be able to pay the rent. So um, giving them some flexibility, but I think also, you know, making it subject to the town's, uh, the town's approval is important. Okay. So I, I guess something that, I guess, grant funding is in four-month increments? That doesn't really make a lot of sense to me. I mean... I would think that it would be yearly grants and, and the like. Four months just seems kind of strange to me. Um, so I guess um, I'd like to understand a little bit more about how their funding does happen. I mean, I, 
I'm, I'm used to actually these clauses in mm -hmm. governmental entities because if you don't get funding, you don't get funding. However, you know, it's, it's a year-to-year -year, um, uh, requirement when you do governments and NGOs because they do get their funding for the full year and then, you know, maybe I get it for the next year. It's possible, though, that the, that cycle is four months out of sync with the, the, the lease. Okay. Um, well, no, but if you give them... Uh, okay, so you, initially you need four months, but then you could get on a year. Right? Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, so, yeah, so as long as the two cycles are sort of in sync. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. I think that's more... That's more the question. Yeah. Um, I don't think four months would even do them, help them if if they are on kind of an end of June, yeah, uh, or end of July, whatever the end of the fiscal year is. Um, then I don't even think the four months will help them this year, right? I mean, because that wouldn't really work. But um, but anyway, so. But I think back to your original point, we we sort of have to know a little bit more yeah. about their. You know their funded. cash flow situation. Mm -hmm. So because right. four months just seems kind of short, and I and I think on the sublet, I mean if if they went away, I think we'd be faced with several different decisions. What do we really want in there? What you know, do we want the building? Mm -hmm. I you know I think there's several different things. So I'm not sure mm -hmm. them necessarily subletting is the best well, option. Or it could be for it's, it's at our discretion. Option. I mean, as long as it's at our discretion. Yeah, yeah. You're right. Discretion, or we could terminate the lease. Or we could terminate the lease. Yeah, we could do that too. So, But I guess I would be okay somewhat with uh, with the out because it is just for funding. But I'd, I'd certainly, before I'd consider anything like that, I'd want to understand their funding more. Because four months just, and that's an awfully short period of time. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, I think they'd be happy. I'm sure they'd be happy to give us a little bit yeah, detail color. on yeah. um, their funding and cash flow and how that works, so that the board can take that and decide at a future meeting whether subletting or this four month termination or some ter some period um, notice for termination is um, acceptable. Uh, the other has to do with security deposit. The old um, lease, the expired lease required a security deposit of $5,500 on an annual rent of $40,000. There's no formula to indicate how that was derived. Um, the new lease has a security deposit in Section 5, but does not say how the security deposit is calculated. So that's something we just need to think about. I, I haven't had a model. How big is a security deposit in the new lease? Uh, it doesn't. Oh, well, it doesn't have any anything? No, I don't think it ha it, it refers to I don't have that tab, I'm sorry to say, so I don't have that with me. Uh, but I think that's something we should look at and maybe make it, <coughs> one thought would be to um, make it like the same percentage or the same value that yeah. the old deposit was. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so when we discuss this next time, I'll have something more detailed for you on that. So. The old lease describes the use in detail, um, and I think that I'm, that was intentional. Personal residents of no more than 12 individuals who are clients of the tenant and offices and temporary living, living accommodations of the landlord's staff. The model lease just has model lease language um, for normal educational purposes consistent with the neighborhood. I think it might be better to be specific. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, uh, yeah, absolutely. Okay. All right. We'll put that back in because that's. I wouldn't want the future board members to wonder and or if, if something some issue arose. I, I think it's. The, yeah. If all of a sudden they have twenty people in there or whatever. Else. Yeah. So the old lease addresses parking in two different places that are inconsistent. Section fifteen so that the tenant has three parking spaces. The rules and regulations say two parking spaces. Uh, they think they have three. I will look at the plan to see. We have this allocation plan of parking that yeah, is very formal, yeah. but I think they need to know if they've got parking. Uh, and, and the board will want to consider a lot of these leases. Most of the leases for the building do not specify parking. As a practice, we accommodate a couple spaces for each tenant but it's not in the lease. This one, this expired lease, did have parking in the lease because mm -hmm. it's an overnight mm -hmm. arrangement. So I do think it makes sense to provide for that in the lease. 
So that two, we'll straighten that out. I think um, if they have three now, we should provide for three. Okay, so at the next meeting, I'll have more information on this one, and we should be able to put this one. Um, I, I, th I would think we'd be able to settle this one and get this one signed at the next meeting as well. Great. Okay, thank you. Okay, moving on, we had discussed the Sims escrow. Um, and I owe the board an apology because it's not an escrow, it's the NPP fines. Right, yes. Right. Yeah. So, <coughs> being held back, um, this goes back to January, I think. We had discussed uh, what to do with those fines and had a presentation from the Arlington Land Trust. Following that, we held the matter open to give SNAC an opportunity to come back and make a case for that, and they have not. So um, I think it's probably time to decide what, if anything, we'd like to do with the money being held. I did get a, um, an email with an attachment at the 11th hour. I emailed them and said, well, you said January, I didn't receive anything. This is on the agenda tonight. And um, there was an attachment that I couldn't download. So I don't know what that was, but um, it's, it has been a while. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That was November, I think it was November when we first had it on the agenda. And then in January, we said we ex would extend to them, them an opportunity to provide a formal request. Mm -hmm. And did not get anything. And I can't, I can't access it. Do you want to forward it to me? It's yeah, it's a dot dat. Ooh. Yeah, I don't want that. <laughs> That's a weird file. Yeah. Let's see. Okay, I'm going to forward it to you. Uh, yeah, M I K E dot C A Y U. At you know? Yep. Okay. My phone doesn't have you coming up automatically. That's a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> no offense. None taken. And I got this one. My, mine's on the website, dinner. so everyone can do it anyway on TV. <laughs> okay. You guys feel free. Yeah. Yeah. It's one tonight. Exactly. <laughs> feel free. Now you get spam. Exactly. So while we're waiting yeah. for that to get through the ether, um, you know, when we talked about this last time, we um, I suggested that it could go to the land trust or could go to the housing authority. There's also HCA, but the principle behind that suggestion was that the original purposes for uh, undertaking the Sims urban renewal project were housing, conservation, um, and so that, that would make sense if um, the MPP fines could go to further those mm -hmm. two efforts in Arlington. Uh, either both of them or uh, both housing and conservation or Three organizations. It's twenty six thousand two hundred fifty dollars. Yeah, I think I recommended that it would be following what um, Brian asked for or recommended, which was that it would go to the conservation. It added into the conservation money to be then assigned to the conservation lands relative to Sims administering the right the mm -hmm. conservation easement, which does take effort. Mm -hmm. That was on the table. I think that was a Good idea. I agree with Andy. I think it keeps it on the site, which right. seems appropriate. Um, and you know, with the land trust, it's pretty clear there's a mechanism in place to take in the money and, and oversee it. So I, I think we went through the, the numbers, and they need that kind of money to complete what they're doing now and ongoing. It's not too much money for them to have by any stretch. Mm -hmm. So we wanted to confirm that 
it made sense and it seemed to based on the facts that we got then. I'm not sure why they went back because I thought that really was, well maybe it was just one of, still one of the options, but I thought that was the lead option at that point, but I don't remember exactly. I tried to open it in uh, Google Docs. So I to it. Okay. So, so um, she was. did say Karen Johnson from Sims Neighborhood Advisory Committee. Um, and she, because I called it Sims escrow, she may, I may have confused her too. She said, I emailed Brian. He suggested a more specific reference to be consistent with the CR management plan. And that may have to do with a uh, um, letter regarding the annual report. So it's not very helpful. And that's not Karen's fault. That's because I should have made it clear that I was talking about the MPP fund. Mm -hmm. Although they, they said they were going to forward something on the forms. So. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, no, I, I, think, I think the conservation fund makes a ton of sense myself. I think I, think I would agree with that. So um, we need to designate that the total MPP funds, fines, excuse me, of approximately $26,000 be entrusted to the Arlington Land Trust for administering the conservation easement at the Sims site. Correct. There's no specific name for that? I thought there was. There probably is, so that's what I was actually... Yeah. Before I actually put it into a motion, I just wanted to make sure I had the right, the right yeah, reference. I, I think that is the right reference. I just, I just thought we had a name for that. It is. There is a name. Actually, is it what you called it here? Hold on. Some stewardship fund? Yes. Is that right? That's yes, right. that is it. The same stewardship fund. Yep. Um, I move that the uh, collected um, NPP fines of approximately $26,000 be entrusted to the Arlington Land Trust to um, uh, be added to the Sims Stewardship Fund. I second. All in favor? Aye. 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 So now, you. Carol, you were going to say that. So I think it was exactly. Yeah, we, we were there. We beat that one. Yeah, yeah we beat yeah. that one. Today. Okay. Hey, work tracking update. All um, right. It's been a long, long time since we've done a work tracking update. Um, so I wanted to just revive that and um, go over just a few things. The master plan, um, town meeting presentations are going well. We've had two so far. Um, it's Article 46, so we're doing um, four. We've done two of four information sessions for town meeting members to help them understand the master plan and what endorsement means, what they are being asked to do with this endorsement. How are those meetings going? Well, I think, I think, well, Andrew went to the sec uh, second one, mm -hmm. so uh, he can comment. Uh, <laughs> yeah, there was some discussion. Most of the discussion centers the plan and what's in it itself, and not actually what the endorsement means. Um, but it's yeah, seems to be getting some support. People have some really good comments and questions. Well, what's the format? Is it similar to? to does she give a? Do you and does members of the need? master plan advisory committee are there? I think there were four members plus Ted Fields. And Laura Wiener. Laura Wiener were there at the one I was at the other night. Um, the committee gives a brief presentation. Ted and Laura speak a little bit about sort of the sections that they're responsible for, and then they open it up for discussion to anyone that's there. Do they have a copy of an abbreviated? There is a, there is an abbreviated plan, or um, yep. yeah, an executive summary. I think it's seven or eight right. pages. Right. Um, I think we got that as town meeting member. Yes, it was yeah. mailed to town yeah. meeting yeah. member. Yeah, I got that member. I got about 
Yeah. It's out there for everybody. I don't see that. So <coughs> I'll, I'll bring it next time. I may have to one. Go to I, it. That's I, I can I give you copies. I'm surprised. Well, I was supposed to go to one of these things, but I missed the first one. And you have another yeah. chance this Thursday There's evening. There's one this Thursday. Thursday. Where is that one? Um, that one is at the Thompson School. Right. And then the last one is at the Central School, and I'd have to look at the website. Uh, it's, uh, I okay. think April 7th. Yeah. I believe it's okay. Tuesday, April 7th, if I'm not mistaken. 7 p.m., and that will be at the Central School mm -hmm. Senior Center. They are doing a good job of making sure that people understand that this is not a document that requires anything of the town yet. They've done a, a very good job of talking about the next steps and how <coughs> the town is going to move next into the implementation stage. And they're asking for volunteers, which is great. And it seems like they're getting some interest, at least at the one I was at the other night, they're getting some interest from people who want to become more involved as the steps of the plan are in place. So that was a positive sign, I thought. So, but it, it went for about two hours. There were some good questions. Uh, Wendy Richter from the Master Plan Advisory Committee um, compiled the questions that she heard. Um, so it's interesting. I'll forward that to the board. It doesn't mean that those same questions will arise at the next one or the next one, but it's, in, it, it's, uh, it's informative to see what questions come up. They also were provided with the language of the vote for Article 46. The summary, uh, two other handouts, two different things. There's an implementation schedule. That's right, the implementation and schedule, so they can see this is what, what's happening next. And that helps the to zoning members. Map. Thank you, the zoning map. Uh, we did not have a zoning map at the first session, but I think it's really helpful yeah. for people who have never seen it to mm -hmm. yeah. to realize that a lot of that. Chalk a blog, it's like. Yeah, mm -hmm. and that there's so much action on Mass Ave in terms of zoning districts. There's a lot of a, a variety on Mass Ave, Broadway, Summer Street, but for the most part, the rest of the map is residential. And the master plan doesn't propose a lot of change uh, to the residential districts. With that said, though, there is a section on affordable housing, and that's got to go somewhere, and there uh, are a few implementation steps that could potentially help uh, property owners who are interested in working with their neighbors to potentially see if the town would undertake something to address uh, concerns about uh, large houses going uh, into established neighborhoods on double lots and that type of thing, uh, sometimes known as mansionization. So, the implementation schedule is helpful for people to see because it's, you, you can see that a lot of what is going to follow is staff work or committee work. Um, there is this understandable responsibility, like what are we saying we're going to pay for if we undertake this, if we endorse this master plan? And it helps when you start looking at the implementation steps, you realize, well, so much of this has to come back to town meeting. Mm -hmm. And that's why we want them to get engaged now and to stay engaged uh, as we begin to implement it. One of the implementation steps is uh, to work with the community to develop design guidelines for future redevelopment that ideally would be then incorporated into zoning, the zoning amendment. So we, in order not to lose any momentum, we uh, have someone on board who will be working with, we'll have an event April 11th, that's a Saturday. Uh, we'll actually do some work on Mass Ave. Uh, I don't mean some design work, but getting input on design preferences. Uh, David Gamble, who's done work uh, on the master plan, was chosen, and Andy uh, and Andy West and uh, Harris Band from Master Plan Advisory Committee helped um, in whittling down the proposals. So that, I think, will be very helpful uh, because so much of the anxiety in redevelopment is what will it look like, how big will it be, um, will it have an Arlington feel. Uh, so I'm looking forward to that and I'll keep you informed. Um, but Saturdays in the spring are hard to come by, mm -hmm. but it is the best day to try to do this kind of work. So April 11th, bear it in mind, uh, we did the Sims Lines. The next is the leases, and we're moving those along. Oh, gateways. I wanted to make sure you were aware of, um, there's a capital budget item 
that's already appropriated to improve the appearance of the Arlington gateways at, at our borders with other communities. Some of the signs are a little decrepit, so it will include um, signage, uh, a, a consistent design scheme for all of the signs, uh, and we expect to have the designer present to the Board of Selectmen soon, so it's already been, um, some concepts have been developed, and the Garden Club likes them. You know, the Garden Club takes care of a lot of the plantings. Mm -hmm. uh, this also involves coming up with uh, planting plans that will take into consideration our climate, mm -hmm. our some consistent design themes across all of the uh, gateways, and a low, an idea of low maintenance, something that will look good and last and be low maintenance. So I'll, uh, I have to figure out a way to get some of the images to you so you can see. It's not that the board has any particular ju jurisdiction, but because it's, it, it's in, in the planning board realm a little bit, I wanted to make you aware of it. I'm going to skip to the East Arlington Mass Ave rebuild will resume um, soon with a lot of the type of work they were still they were doing in the fall. They're going to continue that and then uh, more sidewalk work would begin. Laying new sidewalks will begin probably in May. So we'll be letting business owners know that it's it's resuming and giving them the contact info again. Uh, the last time we updated the work tracking, the website was new. Mm -hmm. So I think it's time for us to look at the website. I'd encourage you all to take a look at the ARB website and give some thought uh, and feedback on what you'd like to see, what you'd like to see different um, information that you think we might want to have that's not up there now. Um, We might need a new picture as well, <laughs> the board. But then we might want to wait until yeah, we, we got to we'll see changes. Yeah, I don't have any update on the governor's um, appointee seat. I'm sorry to say, uh, we do have uh, some liaison and designees on the open space committee. Um, Andy, you're a designee on the open space committee. Um, well, you're a liaison, but. Um, the redevelopment board had designated Lisa Decker, and it's not clear if she's interested in continuing. Uh, I think the um, either the Open Space Committee chair or I will reach out to her, so you might need to make an appointment with Planet Elliott. Um, Bruce is the Liaison Division 2020, and um, so that's all set. You're also on Millbrook. Right, yeah, they, went, they went along with Open Space, so yeah. I just kind of did both. And you are the liaison to the Mass Ave Carter, which I, I don't think is, uh, I don't think it will demand much of you, but during the rebuild, I would suggest that we just keep status quo until okay. it's concluded. Um, if you feel that getting to be too much for you, go let the board know. I didn't do much. You have to be, uh, <laughs> I, I'm being a little facetious yeah, yeah. because it, it, okay. um, there isn't much of a role at this point. Okay. So, but if, if anything came up, I think it would be good because of your design background. So the report to town meeting is um, my... Yeah, that's what I was going to ask. Yeah. You know, this is um, how it looks, and if you think it's acceptable, Great, we'll submit it to the Selectman's office for mailing out to town meeting members with the rest of the materials that the office is sending out.
So no comment on the uh, no action on Article 6? We don't usually... Do we not comment when we do? No, we okay. Just, uh, okay, I just couldn't remember. And we're not doing any... I know it's Article 46, right? But we're not doing any kind of report on, um, on the endorsement? Uh, not in this document. Okay, it'll have this its own is, document? It certainly can, yeah. We... We need to, um, I think at the next meeting, really kind of choreograph the presentation. Yep. Maybe even invite some members of the Master Plan Advisory, <coughs> advisory Committee to um, somehow th this board and the committee have to work together on um, planning that seven minute presentation. <laughs> that sounds like a, a Bruce Swan song to me. So. Whoa. <laughs> That's <laughs> <laughs> I'll leave it to the chairman, of course, but... Well, a blaze of something. blaze of something. Come on, one last... One last Andy, push that rock up the hill one last time. Andy asked um, why it's not with this. When you're doing a zoning bylaw amendment, the redevelopment board, the, the town's planning board, has to report on uh, warrant articles to amend the zoning bylaws. So that's why I kept this one separate, uh, so that it would just include the zoning. I think it would might might be a little confusing to have the master plan in there as well. Why well, is it part of the report to the Arlington to the town meeting? Mm -hmm. It's not part of the same statutory requirement. Uh -oh. State law, master law. So how does it arise? It, it's a, re it's just a, a request to accept a report. No. To endorse it, the I'm master plan. To endorse the, uh, the warrant article says to accept, endorse, or right. mm -hmm. right. um, and the vote is actually to endorse. That uh, you did vote on language, and that oh, did know. go to the board of selectmen, and they did. Um, a, they handle their hearings a little differently than the redevelopment board. They're, I think they're voting tonight on their votes, their recommendations to town meeting, but I think they did um, vote on that language for the endorsement. They voted on it? They voted to, if I'm remembering correctly, I think what they did was vote on that language, but then vote on their recommendations separately. What was their vote on that language? To unanimous. To was it? Okay. It was unanimous. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So their vote was positive on that language. Yes, okay. they they were very enthusiastic and good yeah. and supportive. Yeah. So that would be it. Could be a separate report to uh, to town meeting. Will but be. it's really see that that article is really the, the board of selectmen's report. Mm -hmm. Yeah, although because you're the sponsor of that article. I see. So it's sponsor. their article. Yeah, I, I guess. I, I, but we don't have our vote anywhere then. They, yeah, but it's not a vote, a recommended vote for town meeting to 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 accept. So it's, our it, vote was just to present it to the selectmen. To recommend endorsement to the select. You provided a suggested. You provided suggested language for the mm -hmm. vote. Okay. Which they. Which sponsor? I'm remembering you know what correctly. Accepted sense. it, but in terms of the recommendation to um, town meeting, it's the board of selectmen's hearing. Mm -hmm. They they hold the hearing on the rest of the warrant articles. But the language because was in there, so they've recommended town meeting to endorse the master plan. After tonight, between the two votes, that will be recommended okay. with that language, if all goes as we expect and hope. Okay. Tonight. So the next step would be for the committee and the board to work together uh, with staff on a presentation at town meeting. So that would be, uh, we'll include uh, slides with images and Reviewing the master plan process, the public engagement, the uh, purpose for the warrant article, and what happens next, and why we're the 
will explain why we're seeking the body's endorsement. Mm -hmm. So how long will Bruce's speech be? <laughs> how long will your speech be? We'll ask for extra time. As long as the well, moderator will let exactly. us. Exactly. We'll ask for extra time for him. <laughs> Mr. Moderator. It's his last Request speech. 25 exactly. Minutes. 25 minutes. <laughs> With extensions? <laughs> okay. So there's another um, kind of surprising uh, development. Uh, we've learned that a developer is um, intending to submit an application for a 40B at the um, Yugar really? site. In Arlington? In Arlington. Because there's another one I read in the paper that's in a 40B in Belmont. Belmont. The Silver... Yeah, the Silver Forest. Silver right, Maple Forest. That's, okay. that's uh, a different okay. project. This is... We just um, we just learned that they're planning to submit the 40B um, for an application for 219 units. Uh, so that application, an application for a uh, 40B comprehensive permit, by law goes to a town zoning board of appeals. It first would have to go to the state, and then the state notifies us. Uh, and then there's a 30-day comment period, and then something else happens, and then there's a 90-day. Uh, I will <coughs> get all of this to you just because you want to um, make some recommendations and comment to the UVA. Uh, it's not what the master plan intends for that site. Uh, I understand, though, that part of their uh, concept is to concentrate the development on the western um, edge of the site and to leave the rest for possible for someone to do conservation, improve the conservation um, values, of the wetland values of the majority of the floodplain. It's about a 17 acre site, you probably know, and about 12 of it is in flood, it's flood land, um, flood zone. There is a small amount of um, about what I thought was five acres of so-called upland um, that's still subject to, to some flooding and that's where they would be concentrating the units and the parking and the stormwater retention. So that will be uh, a long, I would imagine, a long process. Uh, I'll keep you informed. Where, where are we with our calculations? With we have made a lot of progress. Uh, I don't really know. I, I think we are in a lot better shape than five years ago when we... You mean for the maximum? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I was wondering the same thing. The one that I Laura, doesn't she have a... There's a couple cases yeah. going through now, too, right? What is it? Uh, Newton? No. Newton, Stone Ann. Stone Ann, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. The one about the, uh, the acreage as opposed right. to the percentage of the yeah. units. Right. Right. Right on the but that one and a half. I don't think the... It, it, they, haven't, well. they haven't gone, they, yeah, it hasn't been very successful. Yeah. It hasn't been very successful. Not Newton, anyway. They, right, they, right. I think that's the one that I remember yeah. reading. They, there are no, um, the state doesn't provide municipalities with these are the hard and fast right. rules. So you, In fact, they specifically don't. don't. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's kind of a, a fluid uh, process. And those units aren't in perpetuity, right? They're, uh... The units on the subsidized housing right. inventory, that's right, they can expire. Um, well, not 40 for your project, right? Yeah. They, they can be in, quote, perpetuity, but perpetuity isn't forever. As ironic or... Yeah, it doesn't seem right, but... Contrary yeah. as it mm -hmm. sounds, but yeah. it's not forever. And if they expire, you can engage with the property owner to, to try to renew that, but there's no yeah. leverage yeah. to do that. So 
when subsidized units come off the inventory, um, and their market rate units being developed all the time, that change the calculus as well. So it's challenging. And in a community like Arlington where there's no land left for development, it's especially difficult. I know you've just got it near to the ground, but I mean, did they say apartments, condos, like you know, what the units would be? You know? I understand that it would be mostly rental, but some home ownership units hmm. as well. Okay. And about 130 parking spaces. 130 parking spaces. Wow. That's a big. Yeah. How many units total? Two. Two nineteen. Two nineteen. So it's forty-four per acre. Uh, what's Sims? 146? It's 107. It is 172 or something. Yeah, it's in the um, so it's Perkins in is 116. So it's bigger than both of those. Yeah. Huh. How many acres is Sims? I forget. 11. Put you on the spot. Is it 11? 12. Okay. I don't know why 8 popped to mind. I think one. one I think one portion was eight. I think the the yeah, assisted living or the MO, MO No, I think I think yeah. I think it, the breakup wasn't it like eight and four. Yeah. Did we? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it, I think we blocked it out. It was, yeah, it was, it was there for a long time. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. Yeah. All yeah. them blocked out, pushing it out. <laughs> uh, yeah. 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 Um. Okay. I hate to go backwards. I do have one last Sorry. question on the report for a sure. second. Um, so I guess my only concern is, is are people going to be surprised when we aren't reporting in here? I mean, do we think that there's going to be something else to hand out from um, either us six? or us and, and basically uh, and the master plan advisory? I wouldn't be at all surprised if there is an additional handout yeah. about Article 46. <clears throat> it may uh, be very similar to things we've already handed out. Right. Um, the summary has been sent to town meeting members. We will have um, additional copies of it. Even if it's just a handout of the proposed vote uh, or the proposed resolution language that says, you know, submitted by the Arlington Redevelopment, you know, uh, uh, board four to zero or whatever or whatever the, yeah. I guess it was three to zero. It's um, so detailed it would definitely e be made available to town Yeah, it just be it would be nice. I know as a town meeting member, if I might well two things, it's forty six, so it's a little strange, right? Because it's something that we've, mm -hmm. you know, put in there that isn't in the first mm -hmm. ten articles, right? So it's already a little bit strange. But I guess I just wanna I, I can kind of understand not including it in this, but I think we've Got to, we should, got to be on record somewhere well, that it's ours. And I guess the question, the question I had is, um, we're required to report on what we do with zoning bylaws. But we could do articles. articles, right? So that's that's the report in the legal sense. Mm -hmm. Can we have a report that, in a more generalized sense, that also talks about other things that the ARB has done, namely, participate in helping this master oh, plan certainly. come to the place that it's at now. And that might be part of a, I mean, I'm wondering if we could sort of amplify what we have here and say, in addition to uh, requirements that uh, the redevelopment board has under state law, we also want to right. advise town meeting mm -hmm. of the master plan process. Um, it, what the role of the board was, what the role of the Master Plan Advisory Committee is, what the role of the Board of Selectmen is in um, putting Article 46 uh, on the board. When do you think this needs to be done to be printed and sent out with the other materials? Any idea on that? It's usually Couple late weeks. March. Um, I think sometimes um, the selectman's office sends it out is the first week of April. Okay. Would you rather have it as part of this document? Well, maybe since you're under a timeline yeah, that kind of crunch, probably just stick with this because mm -hmm. that fulfills the legal requirement, and then look to supplement it with 
a special report. Sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. On the yeah. Master plan, which we can work on, and it being Article Forty Six, we'd have some time mm -hmm. to get that done as well. Yeah. Yeah. That's not. That's probably a good idea. Reports. Help me out with this. Reports are received at the beginning of the meeting. But there's a very limited amount of time to receive a report, correct? Uh, no, no, no. Uh, you, I think you can have a report received. Article uh, three is on the table all the time. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, I guess and I think, I think you're going to put this in. Of the, of the report, the dura duration that the time. Oh, 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 oh. Well, you don't even have to say that. You, you can, because you'll probably be entering this as a report, right? And, and what you could do is you could say, I have uh, two reports. I mean, just because. You want it in the record, so you bring it up. I don't think that's necessarily the time you want to talk about it. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think, because you're going to be talking about it when the article comes up. Yep. So you don't want to get okay. people sick and tired of it. I frankly. want to be sure I understood. So, I think, right? But I, I think that there might actually be a little bit of drama to have a presentation, um, or asking that a special report of the ARB be received specifically with regard to the master plan and not have that received simultaneously with this report. Agreed. I'm just saying, but I don't think you have to speak to the resolution at that period, point of time. No. Good. Yeah, I think that's what we were saying. Oh, okay, I, I understand. Yeah. Okay. yeah, so no, I think it is, you know, a couple weeks later. I think mm -hmm. I, I agree we'll do this one, you know, yep. the first night, essentially. But yeah, the special report, I think you would want to wait. Yeah. yeah. So it's not to confuse. Okay. Okay, so yeah, I'm agreeing. I just, I just don't think you, I just don't think when you put in that special report that you necessarily, like a, you know, Vision 2020, they usually will get up there and talk about their report. Right, right. I don't think you'd necessarily want to do that because, you know, you'd raise no, a bunch of things. No, let's save it for the save presentation. presentation. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. That was more my point. Okay. That's what I wanted to be clear on. I feel so bad for Amy and having to decipher. She does a great job, yeah. She sure does. Okay. okay. So I'll begin to draft something for the board to look yeah. at. Yeah, I'm happy to have to take a look. Great. And I think as far as introductory language, it probably, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if uh, the, the, that he has some language that they've used that selectmen have used because they do several different reports. So does the finance committee, and I think it's usually just a paragraph saying, you know, we're going to report on here's the report on this without much, you know, you don't need all the other intro language that we've got in. Mm -hmm. So I think that's it for the work track. So I'll submit this to, uh, I'll provide copies of the zoning bylaw amendment report to the Selectman's office. Thank you, Carol. Good. So one last, sorry, just to, so I understand. So 40B, it's all ZBA. It's all zoning board of yeah. yeah. They, um, Although the um, Conservation Commission does still hold a hearing, a notice of intent has to be filed for okay. wetlands. And mm -hmm. there, it's presumed a 40B has to, uh, it's presumed that a 40B developer has to meet the local wetlands bylaw as well, but they have an opportunity to, uh, if it's uneconomic to follow the local wetlands bylaw, they, it's, they have to demonstrate why and how it is. But they do have to meet the state weapons by law. And there's no sense of where the egress would be from somewhere like that as far as probably the Lake Street, right? Uh, right now, it looks like they have, um, from what they are, are planning right now, they would have access, um, I think they have two access points into the neighborhood. Hmm. Okay. And a, and a bike access to the bike lane. Is it, and is it Mugar himself or is it something else? It's a developer, Oak Tree Development. Okay. Oh. Working with Mugar, the Mugar 
family and, and trust. Thanks. I'm sorry. That's okay. It's Thank you. Not a lot to take in. <laughs> so, moving on to approval of the minutes. Dean Bruce. Okay. Um, Carol, I can send this to as a red line uh, okay. if the rest of the board thinks these are worthy of, of the amendment. Um, in the first, I guess it's the second paragraph, the very end of it that says, the section regarding posting of notices would come out of the zoning bylaw, but be allowed by zoning. I would suggest that we <laughs> strike the last clause and then substitute in its place um, the effect of which uh, the effect of which would be that the posting of such notices would no longer constitute a violation of the zoning bylaw. I understand. Okay. <laughs> On the second page, the sixth paragraph. This is just a clarification where I said that hypothetically, if the proposal were enacted, would the intent be satisfied with a simple statement? I thought, dash, i.e., that the proposed improvements comply with all applicable zoning requirements. Clarify what I was going at there. Um, and then the second paragraph following that, that says Mr. Fitzsimmons commented that the issuance of the permit would be an assertion that it meets zoning, I think, uh, would imply that the allowed improvements meet zoning. And the paragraph after that, that begins, Mr. Loretti explained, um, and the last sentence which reads, he added that what seems to happen now is the application goes to the board without a clear statement of the, you know, I guess that's okay, that has written, so never mind that one. Um, on the third page, second full paragraph, um, where after the preceding paragraph says, Mr. Pinnell closed the public hearing, and then just as a transition, I thought we should have uh, a clause, an introductory clause, with respect to Article 7, Mr. Fitzsim has proposed, etc. And that was it for me. I wasn't here for this one, so I'm okay with it. I'm fine with what Bruce said. Move to approve as amended. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I abstain. I'm abstention. Carol, I'll email. Those to you and to Amy tomorrow. Perfect. Okay. Thank you very much. What's our meeting schedule? Yeah. Like. We need to establish a meeting schedule for uh, <laughs> April and May, actually, okay. because with um, the draft schedule, it was it, we didn't have it nailed down because of the town meeting. So mm -hmm. I'm looking at the calendar over there. I can get it here. The today is the 23rd. So if we skip um, the next, if we skip a week, the next Monday is the 6th. Uh, the board could meet on the 6th. I'm also, you might want to coordinate with the um, Master Plan Advisory Committee on working on the presentation. I won't be here on the 6th, uh, but Laura Wiener had said she could cover that night if the board meets on the 6th. I believe the um, Master Plan Advisory Committee is meeting the previous Thursday. So you could meet the 6th and the 20th. Town meeting starts the 27th. The 20th is Patriots Day, though. So, no, you won't be meeting on the 20th. So you could meet the 13th, but by then, it might, I don't know if you feel like uh, skipping two Mondays is going to put you too close to town meeting. 
I won't be here on the 6th. I already have a shooting and travel day. We could just do it on the 13th, but will that give us enough uh, time to come up with a plan for Sisyphus to come up with a speech? Uh. <laughs> <coughs> yeah. Let's sort of overlook the whole nomination. <laughs> I really remember that. Symptoms <laughs> off. <laughs> All right. So three of you could meet on the sixth. It's it's hard to tell. You'd have two weeks between the thirteenth and the twenty seventh to work on any preparation order. Um, and it doesn't mean that you wouldn't be able to coordinate with the master plan advisory committee or, or one of you might want to work with the master plan advisory committee possibly the week of the 6th. Mm -hmm. Right, to get something for the 13th. Right. Yeah, yeah. That, that right. probably makes a, right. makes a, lot, more sense. a lot more sense. I think they need the 2nd, so I could even let the board know uh, to confirm that if if, if a member wants to work with the committee that night, otherwise the committee could, um, I could report to the board after the Mass Plan Advisory Committee, meet, committee meeting, and uh, Laura could then work with the board on the 6th. Will, will they have a draft on, to show us on the 6th or the 13th? Oh, or you mentioned slides, a report, that kind of thing. Oh, isn't there something? There will be the some progress right made on a. But you have something right now that you gave already to the selectmen, enough the selectmen to the town meeting members in these four meetings. Don't you have a kind of a right. pretty good format? We have an outline, a, you, a pretty would detailed you outline. Start with that, or are you going to make something new up? That I think would take longer than the presentation time we have. Right, I was starting yeah. with that. Would you use that as a as a and condense it. Yeah. condensing it down? I mean, yeah. it's a, that's the basic information, but you have to turn it into something that's right. a little more concise. It's more the introductory language, I think, that's right. going to be key, which is, look, this is what it is, this is what it isn't. You know, that's that's going to be the thing to hit the hardest on. Do it on the internet. This is what it isn't. This yeah, is that's what it is. is. Yeah. yeah, yeah, sorry. We, we should definitely have a draft with images, with <coughs> some images. We may not have the whole thing fully formed by then, but we'd have something for the board to see and the committee to see by the 6th. So it's a question of whether you want to meet on it or just pass it around and then comment on it leading up to the 13th. Okay. So meet the 13th. Is that? Well, I know I can't make it the 6th, but mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Sounds like agreement for the 13th. And then the board will assemble and meet at town meeting on mm -hmm. the 27th. meeting is likely to continue. But you have to see if members of the advisory committee can meet on the 13th. Okay, I will find out. A member. April 13th is Thomas Jefferson's birthday, and I don't know why that's on my calendar. <laughs> don't have any environmental design reviews on deck. So if anything arises, I will let you know so that you can work that into May. Memorial Day is, I think, the 25th this year. Yes. So you would Town meeting is likely to continue um, May 4th. All right, so we just do a uh, short. We do a short meeting and then uh, adjourn, recess, I don't know which verb we use to the auditorium to uh, attend town meeting. So that you probably, I don't know if you're prepared for, for this, but usually the chair uh, attends the sessions, but you might want to discuss who's going to 
after zone anyway. You'll be there anyway. Okay. That's good. For the most part. It's good for family life. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So it's leaving the house sometime. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta be going to all the town. Twin boys, right? Uh huh. <laughs> okay. Seven hours in the emergency room yesterday. Oh no. No, it's Seven five. Hours it's five. Two. dull moment. Okay, so the 13th and then a meeting on the 27th, I'll see if a member of the Mass Plan Advisory Committee or more would be um, able to come and collaborate with you on the presentation on the 13th. And send a draft around on the before, We'll honor, send a draft before that. Or honor around the 6th. Right. Or honor before. Yeah, or before. And then... And I'm happy to take a look at that special, you know, if we want to do a one-page special report with the resolution okay, line. Okay, great. Who's uh, chairman of the Silver Lightning this year? Is it uh, yeah, Mr. Steven, Byrne? Stephen Byrne. Oh, he is still? Yeah. Was he last year? For Tom? I can't remember. Joe Carroll. Oh, Joe was last year? Oh, I thought it was Steve. Okay. Unless I've lost track of time. Yeah, okay. Which, it's possible. On every four. I just want to finish this note. My notes are so bad. <laughs> <laughs> draft of the presentation. Okay. Thank you. I think that's it. That's it. Anything else? Move to adjourn. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. <laughs>